Hello chemists and welcome to this episode of Bale's Chemistry. We're looking at the variable oxidation states of transition metals. This is AQA Chemistry Specification 2.5 Transition Metals and is on paper one of your final exams. One of the key properties we talked about in the first video was that transition metals can have variable oxidation states. This is not exclusive to transition metals and we've seen examples of chlorine doing this in disproportionation reactions and other elements can do it too. But it's much more unusual in metals. Even within transition metals, some oxidation states are much more common than others. To understand a bit about why transition metals can do this, it helps look at their ionization energies. For this one, we're gonna compare calcium and iron. Calcium normally forms two plus ions, and you can see a big jump between the second and third ionization energies. Electrons are removed first from the 4s orbital for the first and second ionization energies, and then the third electron is removed from the 3p orbital which is much closer to the nucleus, so much harder to remove, which results in this much higher ionization energy. In comparison, there's no big jump in the ionization energies for iron. This is because the electrons are removed from the 3D and the 4S orbitals, and these are very similar in energy. One very specific example mentioned in the AQA specification and often used in exam questions is vanadium. Vanadium has four common oxidation states, each forming different colors. We have vanadium 2 plus, which is violet, vanadium 3 plus, which is green, vanadium 4 plus, which is blue, and vanadium 5 plus, which is yellow. We need to know the reactions with zinc, which can reduce vanadium 5 all the way down to vanadium 2. In this first reaction, vanadium 5 is reduced down to vanadium 4 by reacting with zinc, and the color change that we observe is yellow to blue. In this second reaction, vanadium 4 plus is reduced down to vanadium 3 plus, and the blue to green color change is observed. And in the final step, vanadium 3 plus is reduced to vanadium 2 plus and the color changes from green to violet. To show that zinc is a strong enough reducing agent, we can look at the electropotentials. Zinc has the most negative electropotential of all the half equations shown here, and therefore will always be placed on the left hand side of an electrochemical cell. This means it will have its reduction reaction reversed to an oxidation process, which will provide electrons for the reduction of the vanadium species we've seen in the full equations previously. Using Tollens reagent is a reaction that you'll be familiar with whilst testing for aldehydes and ketones. In this process, the silver ions are reduced to silver metal atoms, which form that silver mirror. The aldehyde being tested is oxidized through to a carboxylic acid. Because ketones can't be further oxidized, it's not possible for silver ions to be reduced, it means it's only a positive test for an aldehyde. A redox potential is the same as an electropotential and can be used to predict the direction of redox reactions. The more positive values are easier to reduce as they are less stable and they will gain electrons more easily. Electropotentials are always recorded under standard conditions. This importantly has the metal ion dissolved in aqueous solution so that it's surrounded by water ligands. If we change the water ligands, we'll also change the redox potential and then it's influenced by the strength of the coordinate bond between the ligand and the metal ion. If we alter the pH, we also change the redox potential. Remember, these redox equations are equilibrium, so they're governed by Lestalier's principle. Some reduction processes need a source of hydrogen ions to get them started, whilst others produce hydroxide ions. Adding more hydrogen ions in both situations will influence the equilibrium. In this example with vanadium, more H plus will push the equilibrium to the right. And in this example with chromium, adding more H plus will remove OH, which will also push the equilibrium to the right. This shows a general trend of more acidic solutions giving a more positive redox potential. That's it, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Bale's Chemistry. If you have, hit the thumbs up below. Just spend a little bit of time going back over those equations. They're really difficult to remember and they're really important that you've got them ready for your exam. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.